Hey everyone, this is Scott from CertMedia.com and in this video I'll be covering Yoast SEO Premium and I'll be answering the question whether or not you should purchase Yoast SEO Premium for your website. For those of you who don't know, Yoast SEO Premium is a, effectively a paid add-on for the base Yoast SEO plugin that includes additional features. It starts at $89 a year and on renewal they include a discount for you to continue using the plugin. So Yoast SEO Premium comes with many additional features that are not found in the based Yoast SEO plugin. Some of those features include a redirect manager, a internal link suggestion tool, some additional features for keyword monitoring as well as social previews, steal cornerstone content and the orphaned content filter. The redirects module is probably going to be the most frequently used. What you do is you can redirect content through this menu. You can mark the redirect as either a 301 moved, so the content has been moved to another URL, 302 found, which you should really never need a reason to use it, a 307 temporary redirect, which you will seldomly use, saying that the content is being moved to a different URL for a temporary time period, a 410 content deleted, which lets the search engine know the content has been removed and you should go ahead and de-index it and remove it as quickly as possible. And then a 451 unavailable for legal reasons, which means that there has been a legal request against the content to have it removed. Not all of these are directly redirects. For instance, if you put a 410, it will just give you the old URL to input and then it'll mark it with a 410 error uh, header. And then a 451 is the same exact setup. You can do both basic redirects and complex redirects, very similar to other redirection plugins like simple 301 redirects. You then have a settings tool, which basically just allows you to choose the method through which the redirects are handled. You can do PHP or HT access. Typically the PHP is fine for most setups. You can do HT access if you know how to recover it in case of an issue. And then you can either choose to generate a separate redirect file or just add it directly into the HT access file. If you want the redirects included in, their sep in a separate file, you can go ahead and check it here and then it'll just tell the HT access file to include the contents of that file. It's really just a structure. If you have a very large complicated HT access file, it may be easier for you to manage the redirects to be in their own individual file, but it's purely just from a management standpoint. There's no real benefit to doing it either way. And the same thing for the the redirect method up here. The only advantage is if you do it from HT access, it'll be faster because it doesn't need to wait for PHP to load. So this is the most commonly used functionality. Some additional use cases that it comes with is if you delete content, it'll prompt you to redirect it to either a new URL if there exists, or you can mark it as a 410 content deleted. So it'll be de-indexed faster. So from there, you have additional suggestions for, our, for your content editing experience. I am going to open up a post to show you what these are. So this is where you get the bulk of your new features. One thing that you get is the internal link suggestion tool over here, which basically just will spin up internal link suggestions that it would like you to link content to. It's very useful, but it's very hit or miss. For instance, there we go. On the update, it now suggests that I link to this other post that I just randomly made. So I'm gonna copy this and I'm gonna copy this link and then I'm gonna, I'm gonna link this WordPress text to that URL. And the reason you wanna link content to one another is it helps establish where users can go once they're done with your post or it can help them with additional content by giving them other resources they can reference. So if you're writing a complicated post, maybe you have a glossary of indexes that are index terms that you use and you can link to those terms to help users understand what it is you're referring to. This basically just makes it easier for users to find additional content on your website, and it also can help with rankings. One of the key things that people always seem to forget about is having a good internal linking, and good internal linking, and the reason they forget about it is because it's quite hard to do, especially when your site gets larger and larger and larger. Your older content tends to be forgotten which is perfectly acceptable. If the content is forgotten and it gets very few views, I wouldn't drive yourself crazy to go back and add a bunch of links to it to posts that are three years after that one was written. But it's something to keep in mind with your future posts and the Yoast SEO internal linking tool is honestly very effective. I use it on my live site and I have no complaints with it. The suggestions are very good and many times I find myself working the link suggestions into the content to help users find new posts. This, this takes me into the second feature that it adds, and this is the orphaned content filter. 
What this does is it allows you to, under here, you'll get a new tab for orphan content. Orphan content is effectively any content on your website that has no direct link to it. So it has a question mark right now because there's not that many posts for it to work with, but effectively if there's a post or post on your website that there is no links pointing to it, it's going to be labeled as orphaned. Having too much orphaned content can be really bad from your site structure because the deeper that the user has to go to find that post, the less likely it is to get traffic and frankly, the less likely it is to rank well. So typically you want to avoid having a substantial amount of your content as being labeled as orphaned, but it's still useful to be alerted of that orphaned content. So you can say, Hmm, can I incorporate this in another blog post I'm writing? And if so, then you'll want to link to it. You're also given that stale cornerstone content, which is just another uh, filter to choose from. All that that does is it says you have this content label as cornerstone, but you haven't updated it and it's kind of old. Maybe you should look at it again to update it and modernize it and to keep it fresh. Cornerstone content, as I mentioned in the Yoast SEO video, is basically just a means of labeling your most important content that you're saying, this is my most important piece. This is my, this is very important. I need to keep it updated. This is where my traffic is coming in from. And typically with your cornerstone type content, you want to make sure that it's kept up to date and that you're making it relevant still. So that's all that that filter does. Now back to the blog post, some of the other features that you get is the ability to specify a, the more additional key phrases. So you can include your focus key phrase. Let's type in WordPress. And as you can see, it gives me my little readout and it's very useful and we're all very used to it by now. You can also specify additional key phrases in here. So related key phrase. And what's cool about specifying your related key phrase is you're able to specify multiple key phrases. So as you can see, I can add additional key phrases as I'd like. I'm just gonna say uh, delete as a key phrase. And I'm just doing this to illustrate the functionality. You can add multiple key phrases to get additional recommendations for those keywords that you're attempting to rank it for. So typically when you write content, your focus key phrase, the first one that you select is typically what you're trying to primarily rank for. But oftentimes with content and, and even in the case of something like YouTube videos, you're trying to rank for multiple keywords and key phrases. And this allows you to keep track of how your article and your content is optimized for those key phrases. Now, one thing to keep in mind is that for every additional key phrase, you're going to get different suggestions because the one thing that you're trying to remember is the primary focus key phrase is what you're primarily trying to rank for. The additional ones are just additional key phrases that you're trying to rank for, but they're not that important. So, this is very useful for just finding how your additional key phrases are ranking or are doing in that post and how they could affect your rankings. I use this feature seldomly depending on the type of content I'm writing, but I haven't been a very big adopter of it solely because of the type of content that I write about. It tends to be very narrow and very niche and very guide and how to and tutorial oriented. So my key phrase is typically, what it is I'm writing about and I don't have to do this minute optimization, but when you're writing longer form content, this can be quite useful. And then you can also add synonyms. So synonyms, as always, you just choose words that are similar to it that typically if somebody searches like new, a synonym could be fresh. So they're basically the same type of key, uh, keywords and key phrases that are just different words, but they mean the same thing. And Google is now much better now at understanding how keywords that someone searches for may be different depending on where they're from. You may say the newest WordPress themes, newest WordPress themes 2019, something 2020, just as an example, it's not even a good title, but if somebody says fresh WordPress themes 2020, maybe you'll understand that fresh also means new, and then it will understand how that content is related. So that's enough on that. The other interesting thing you get is access to the social previews. Social previews is pretty useful because it allows you to see how it's actually going to look. So you put your image in here, you optimize your title and you'll get to see what it looks like. So by selecting the image, um, this is what it's gonna look like. And I could say, hello, Facebook. 
And then you could put a little description here. And this is what it's gonna look like on Facebook more or less. The same thing with the Twitter. I have a large Twitter card enabled in the social settings, so that's the what's gonna show here. And you choose your image and you can optimize for each platform. Now keep in mind when you optimize for Facebook, the Facebook open graph data is used by most other social networks. So for instance, Pinterest will most likely take that open graph data and use that for the snippet and the images that it recommends. So it's something to keep in mind that just because you update this here doesn't mean it's only affecting Facebook. So don't include just Facebook. You'll want to make sure that you're optimizing it for a variety of platforms, but that you're still being enticing. The common thing that someone does with this section is they change the title of the content to sound more clickworthy, or as oftentimes it's called clickbaity, because that's how you're going to attract more users to click the content from your social platforms. A very useful and powerful feature. Outside of that, you get not much else. We get the redirect manager, which is very useful. There, it basically just takes out the need of another plugin. The social previews I find to be very useful if I'm trying to optimize for different social media platforms. The biggest thing that I like about this is the internal linking tool. There's not really anything like it. Someone would say there's like SEO smart links, but the problem with those are is they're not organic. This allows you to easily link content from one another and to give valuable suggestions to you. I don't know how they determine what content gets linked. And the more posts you have, the deeper and the better and the more recommendations you're given, which makes it very useful. I think I, I think I get like 10 or so on my longer form content on my live website. And this, this is my favorite functionality of this entire um, plugin. It's just getting the Yoast internal linking suggestions because I found them to be very useful. So you, it's really just going to matter how you like, how much you're willing to pay. What I find is the biggest obstacle is somebody doesn't want to pay $89 a month for reference, uh, $89 a year. For reference, that's a little bit less than, what is it, like eight bucks a month? And if you have multiple websites, then I would probably say that it's not worth it. But if you have one primary site that you're trying to optimize for, Yoast SEO Premium is quite solid at what it does. Now, whether or not it gives you enough to justify the cost is another debate. Part of the thing about Yoast SEO that makes it so great as a free plugin is you get a lot of features and you get features that pretty much every other SEO plugin has to copy. But Yoast SEO is the one that did it all in the first place. So it's something that you have to consider when you're thinking about how to grow really your business. Frankly, for most websites, I would say Yoast SEO Premium is not necessary. If you have the money and you want to further optimize your content and reduce your bounce rates and increase your clicks to your other content, I would suggest this solely because the internal link suggestions are so powerful being told what posts are relevant to this post and that the user should also visit is very useful. The other functionality is kind of gimmicky. Like I could live without the preview for the social media tab right here. It's, it's useful, but I don't need to see it. I can pretty much know what this is gonna change. The multiple key phrases for as often as I use, I wouldn't buy the plugin for that. Just solely because I don't use it enough in my writing to justify the cost of that. The redirection tool, very useful, also really good. That'd be my second second favorite feature, solely because of the different URL uh, redirects that you can enable. But the thing that I do recommend this the most for is the internal link suggestions. It's the area where almost everybody does it incorrectly. It's the area where almost nobody remembers because it's always like, oh, it's always an after the fact type of issue. So. If your website has the, if you're, if you're investing in your website to grow more, I would say get it. If your website's not making money and it's a hobby blog that you're trying to make money off of like AdSense or some kind of like affiliate type blog, don't buy it because you won't get your money out of it in the way that you're thinking. If you have the money though, and you want to help optimize your content further, and maybe you're a small business and you just want to link your posts better to one another. Yoast SEO Premium is an amazing tool and the internal link suggestions makes it invaluable compared to the competition. 
those are my thoughts about the plugin. You can feel free to leave yours in the comments below. I'll respond to them. And please leave your, leave your thoughts in the comment section below. Otherwise, thank you so much for watching and goodbye.